Thank you guys so much for sending all your questions via Instagram. I put out a story the other day just saying that I'm gonna do a chicken, backyard chicken Q&A. So it's gonna be a really simple video. Just gonna be answering a lot of the most popular questions. I am outside and the sun is gonna change a lot. So hopefully it's not too bad. You guys are awesome. Look at all these questions we got. Literally, I think we got over 100 questions. So I'm just gonna answer the ones that I know if there's really good ones that I don't know the answer to, I'm gonna bring those up as well. Um, and just kind of mention maybe where we can go for the answer. Actually, Sammy is a really good segue. One of the questions I get a lot is how to make your chickens more quiet. And we're not perfect at this, but I'm gonna show you right now one thing that I do. Here goes. Here goes. All right, if you didn't see what just happened back there, I literally just threw an egg on the ground. And that's kind of my only tip for keeping chickens more quiet is I will throw them treats just to kind of shut them up. There's really no way to train them though. So um, I'll go more into it when we're answering the questions. Now, full disclosure, I'm gonna answer all these questions based on my personal experience. I wouldn't consider myself an expert. I just have about four years of chicken keeping experience. But if you guys want to ask experts, I always recommend that or also talking to your local chicken groups, etc. This is just kind of to get the wheels turning because I know most of us have similar questions that we didn't realize we had until somebody else asks them. All right, right at the beginning, what are your chicken's names? Oh boy, let's see, I'll name them right now. We got Silver, Quick, Buffy, Willow, Pinky, Freya, get out of there, there's a dog. Hey, Cookie, Amelia, Mabel, Deli, Betty, Sammy, Reptar. I know Millie is in the nest box right now, um, but I'm not sure who else is in there, so hopefully that's a good start. Does your coop get cold because of air coming in the top? Our coop does get cold, but cold is not my main concern with chickens. Actually, heat is and moisture in the air, so I would say temperature wise it does cool down but it stays nice and dry so i did a whole video on taking care of chickens in the winter which i will link for you guys but it's definitely more important to have a dry coop than to have necessarily a warm coop within reason getting started for the first time information so i always recommend backyardchickens.com it's a forum website um, there's a lot of good info on there also i will link the video Ch taking care of chickens 101 but i do have a couple kind of beginner videos on just the basics of taking care of chickens i'm not quite to this part yet but we did get a lot of questions on the chicken coop behind me that we built it's our second chicken coop we built much better than the first model we do have those plans available which i linked for you guys below because i know we got that question a few times in here as well Preferred technique for cleaning pasty butt off chicks. So fortunately, I haven't had a huge problem with pasty butt, but for the times that I did, I would just soak them in warm water um, and just kind of clean them off. It is really important to clean them off because if they are totally clogged, it can back them up and that's a big problem. So um, I would just soak them in warm water. I think I only had to do it like two or three times between 25 chickens. First time getting chickens, top three pieces of advice. Ugh. Protection is huge, so protection from predators is kind of the area where keeping chickens is gonna be different from having normal pets, so make sure your chickens are well protected against predators. Read up on medical conditions. Stop pecking my sweater. <laughs> Read up on medical conditions um, because chickens are gonna get things. There's a lot of things that they can get, so start reading up on those now, and I guess the third piece of advice would be to join a local chicken group for your area because that's where you're gonna get the best advice for your climate and taking care of chickens in your area, specifically and be active on that group because those people are gonna be able to answer a lot of questions for you. What are your early telltale signs of rooster versus hen? So the easiest way to tell a rooster from a hen when they're chicks, uh, I don't believe in the feather sexing methods. I don't believe they're actually accurate. I think there's a lot of old wives tales out there. You can get auto sexing breeds where you can tell the girls from the boys based on feather patterns even from the day that they hatch. But aside from that, the two biggest things I look for when telling a chick from a rooster versus a hen is usually, I think it's usually around the six to eight week mark. Uh, two things, the comb and making sure that you're comparing the breeds of the comb of some breeds to similar breeds. So you're not gonna be comparing the comb of black copper morans to Easter eggers because black copper morans just have bigger combs in general. Um, but if you have the same breed and one has a much bigger redder comb, that's kind of a giveaway. And number two is gonna be the posture and the behavior of the chick. Uh, so the roosters tend to walk a little bit more upright and they tend to be um, a little bit more confident. That's not true across the board, but generally that's kind of a rule of thumb. And then obviously if they start crowing at a very young age, which they might, 
that's kind of a giveaway that you got a roof. When can chicks be moved outside with supplemental heat? This is a question I got a lot. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put for you guys, uh, there's kind of like a few charts that basically say which week, based on the age of the chick, based on week, how the temperature should be, how cold of a temperature they can handle. They should always have supplemental heat until they're fully feathered, but really it all depends on your climate. So I can't give you a specific answer because somebody living in Florida is gonna be able to put their chicks outside a lot sooner in May than somebody like where I am in Wisconsin. So what I'm gonna do is for, link for you guys this chart. It says week one, week two, week three, week four, and I think it goes down by about five degrees each week. It's not one that I came up with. It's just sort of out there on the internet, but this is what I have followed and it has been so far so good and then once they're fully feathered uh, they can handle a lot colder temperatures after that how can I clean a coop also how often there are a few different methods it is it's snowing right now I don't know if you guys can see you're gonna see a little bit of snow I told you it was cold there are a few different methods for coop cleaning most people use kind of a traditional method where you go out pretty much every day and you're gonna have to scoop poop and then maybe do like a deep clean out once every few weeks we use what's called the deep litter method I got a lot of questions on deep litter method specifics I am gonna make a video for you guys about the deep litter method specifically but the problem is that the deep litter method takes a good six months to be established if not more than that from beginning to end so uh, I can't really just crank out a video in a weekend we kind of have one in process right now so hopefully I will get that out for you guys um, within a few months but long story short deep litter method is you start with a lot of deep litter about four to six inches of bedding and then you just sprinkle more bedding on top when the coop gets stinky and you basically have a self composting system in your coop it has worked very very well for us uh, not all people swear by it but we do so I'll I'll go into that a little bit more I do have some videos up with some information on it and some video samples of that already if you guys want to check those out how can I integrate new chicks into an established flock this is a really good question uh, you don't necessarily want to just throw Row new chicks in with a new flock especially if they're babies because the older ones will beat up the younger ones they're extremely violent metal creatures so you don't want to do that I have three different ages of chickens um, in my flock and the way that I've done it every time is I have set up a separate run next to the big girls for the little girls and I keep them in that separate run for about one to two weeks so that they can kind of get used to each other before I put them in together uh, the next thing and I do that probably when they're I don't know, around six to eight weeks old. It all depends on the weather and when they're old enough to go outside. So first I just kind of have them next to each other for a couple weeks. Then the next thing I do is I let them out to free range together. So I don't put them in an enclosed area together. I have them free range together. Then I put them back in their respective runs at night just to make sure everybody is getting along. Everything's copacetic. And assuming everybody's getting along okay, it's usually pretty easy from there. Some people will, some people will recommend the first time that you put them in the coop together that you do it at night when they're roosted. So they just kind of go to bed and then they wake up all together I've never tried that myself but if you're having trouble that is a method that you could try I always recommend supervision though what do your chickens roost on ours roost on two by fours we have also had them roost on two by twos and sometimes some like rounder sticks that we've had in the backyard two by fours are just kind of the general rule of thumb because chickens don't wrap their feet they don't necessarily hold on like a parakeet would which would wrap its feet around the perch they don't perch they roost so they like a flat surface to sit on only the kind of downside with two by fours is that they collect poop a lot more easily because they're wider so you're gonna have to clean those off a little bit more too when do you put your chicks in the outdoor coop i kind of talked about this all depends on the weather um, we are gonna get more chicks this year but the other thing is that it all depends on the weather in the past i've gotten chicks earlier in the spring because that's when a lot of people like to do it um, but I've also gotten them in July and I really prefer to get them in late June or July in our climate in Wisconsin because it's so much warmer I can put them outside so much more quickly um, and you don't get eggs as soon but at this point we have more eggs than we need so we're not really worried about that how do you keep your chickens healthy I think there are like three things that I swear by the deep litter method I really believe is really important for keeping a healthy uh, microbiome of creatures that keep everything in balance in the coop so I would say the deep litter method uh, lots of free range time I think the reason that most people run into health problems with chickens is just because they have too many chickens in too small of a space and so the waste builds up and then you're gonna get health issues the more free range time the better 
we don't really have a predator problem where we are, but I know if you have a lot of hawks, you gotta be careful about that. Um, so deep litter method, free range time, and then the other thing is I'm really big on a diverse diet for both people and animals, but we really like to feed our chickens a wide, wide range of food so they don't only get layer feed. They get our fridge scraps, they get our meal scraps, and a lot of people swear by layer feed only, and that's really if you want to crank out as many eggs as fast as you can. We prefer to have more chickens and not need them to lay as much and also be able to feed them a diverse diet. So those are kind of the three things that I recommend for keeping chickens healthy. More deep litter method questions. I'm working on that video for you guys, I swear. Why won't my baby chicks eat treats from me? Trying to make them friendly. Um, <laughs> gotta take time it takes a lot of time it could be the breed some breeds are just more flightier than others I mentioned in some of my other videos one of my favorite chicks is just to soak some feed in water and just let my hands sit in there kind of takes them a while to find out that that is a yummy treat in the first place but uh, yeah it, it takes time but I promise you once they get used to you if you just let your hands sit in the cage they will be easier to handle from then on my first set of chickens my Easter eggers are like dogs they are so tame and it's all because of all the time I spent with them as chicks is salmonella common in chicken owners? I can only speak from my experience. I've never had it. Some say that maybe it's slightly above the normal population amount. Um, in my personal opinion, there is a lot of hype. Definitely wash your hands, be hygienic after handling chicken, but it's not something that I've ever had and it's not something that I, I personally keeps me up at night or anything. How to identify young chicks as female or roosters, we kind of went over this. Another thing I'll add is that you can join Facebook groups and post pictures of your chicks and people will kind of guess whether they think it's a hen or a rooster. Be careful with those groups because some people have no idea what they're talking about and they really act like they do. So don't do anything drastic like cull any chick or give it away until you know for absolutely sure because a lot of the people on those groups are just guessing like you and me and they don't know any more than you or I would. How do you clean the eggs before storing or eating them? Um, I just wash them off with dish soap. I don't know what the proper protocol is, but that's just what I do. What advice do you have for a new chicken mom? Don't be too rough on yourself. There's a lot of learning that goes on, especially the first couple years. Almost everybody loses a chicken or two. In the beginning, we lost chickens to a neighborhood dog attack, and also we had two cases of sour crop. One got so bad that we had to put her down, um, and the other we were able to fix. I have a video on fixing sour crop if you wanna check it out. In the end, I believe what was causing the sour crop was apple cider vinegar for chicks, which is why I do not get my chips. chicks apple cider vinegar. A lot of people swear by it. Uh, since we stopped giving chicks apple cider vinegar, we have never had another case of sour crop. That's all I'll say on that because I know people get really defensive of their apple cider vinegar. Don't be too rough on yourself. There's a lot of learning that goes on and you can't expect yourself to know everything from the beginning. What is the best way to transition chicks from the outside? I'm a big proponent of having them outside in a playpen, supervised for five, 10 minutes at a time, depending on the weather, and then just kind of lengthening that amount of time. But I do like them to spend out time, time outside for a few weeks before they're living outside full time. How do you keep chickens quiet in the morning? Yeah, so there's not really a way to do this that I have found. Chickens can't really be trained to be quiet. It's just part of their nature, and in my experience, it doesn't really have to do with breed. Here girls. Here girls. So that's the call that I do when I have treats for them, and sometimes that's what I'll do to get them to be more quiet. Our loudest chickens are three different breeds. I know some people say like the Brahmas or the Orpingtons are quieter. There's, it's all personality. <laughs> just be prepared to have a loud, a loud chicken. But as you can see, our Brahma was just the one making all that noise. Long story short, just expect that they're gonna make noise. I throw them treats to shut them up for a few minutes at a time, but it, it's a problem. How to winterize coop? I did a whole video on this for you guys, so I'll link that in the description below. Do roosters put themselves in the line of fire if there's a predator so the hens can get away? I've heard that good roosters will do this with hawks. Um, don't expect a rooster to protect against coyotes or, or even like raccoons. Roosters are really best for calling the alarm so that the hens can get away. I think a lot of people have really high expectations for roosters. Don't get me wrong, you can get a good rooster who will die for their hens and that's amazing. Uh, we don't have any roosters. We will in a few weeks, hopefully. We're you're gonna use a different property that has a lot more land. But make sure that you're not expecting too much from roosters because you really, 
you don't know what, from what I understand, you don't know how a rooster is gonna react until uh, until the moment happens. But yeah, long story short, absolutely, it can happen. If you get a good roo, they are worth their weight in gold. Um, whose top chicken is this true? In our flock, our top chicken's name is Millie. I don't know where she is right now. But uh, she is the most confident chicken and she definitely keeps the others in line. Reptar is pretty up there too, actually, our crossbeak chicken. And I think that that's why she has thrived because she um, doesn't doesn't take any sass from the other chickens. But yeah, there's definitely a pecking order and it's pretty interesting to see how they establish it and how they interact with each other. Sammy, the really loud one, she's super insecure and she's definitely on the bottom of the totem pole, which is pretty interesting. I've heard that roosters will help keep chickens in line as far as ladies picking on each other. If you get a good roo, I'm sure that that's possible. I just wouldn't expect every rooster to do that. Um, but I'm a big believer that roosters serve a very important purpose and if they can keep the ladies in line that is fantastic do you have any experiences with scaly leg or poopy butt in older hens I do not we have never the only chicken illness we've ever had out of almost 25 chickens two cases of sauerkraut which stopped when I stopped giving them apple cider vinegar but I do believe the deep litter method and lots of free range time is really key in preventing things like scaly leg poopy butt that kind of thing best place to get chicken supplements and meds what to have in first aid kit this is a really good question something that I should do hi honey something that I should do a little bit a lot honestly more research on um, I would ask back your chickens or ask your local chicken group about that one because it's very important I've just sort of bought medical supplies usually from tractor supply or from the internet as we need them because we haven't needed a whole lot I would say one thing to have on hand is just syringes because we have needed to nurse some chicks back to help um, with syringes those are really key but yes that is a very good question and something I'm gonna look into more I'm getting chicks for the first time what's the hardest part about raising them oh my gosh when they get bigger and they start making messes and they're kicking bedding out of the bin and they want to be outside and you want them to be outside but it's still too cold I would say that's the hardest part about raising them um, the other thing is making sure that they're safe from predators once they're outside is kind of a learning experience for a lot of people so um, definitely build a more secure coop a more secure run in the beginning so they don't have to learn the hard way, even though most of us will learn a lesson or two the hard way there too. Have you found a way to get more bugs in your yard naturally for the chickens to eat? Uh, we have a huge compost pile, which helps a lot with that. The other thing is just the changing of the seasons. Like when we, when it's June bug season, the girls have so many June bugs to eat. The neighbors are always freaking out about the June bugs and we never have any problem in our yard because the girls love to eat them. I would just say the more diverse of a biome that you have, some more species of plants, if you can get a compost pile going, that's gonna be really helpful for getting them more bugs. They will make a mess out of the compost pile, so be warned. The other thing, if you wanna supplement, we use Grub Terra Treats, so I'll link you I'll link below the code for, I believe it's 10% off, but we love our grub terra treats, especially because they add more calcium to the chicken's diet. We don't do oyster shells. We just feed them back their eggshells and do the grub terra treats. Um, no, we've never had a problem with egg eaters. I think that's caused personally more if they're kept in too small a space and if they're bored. But we do like those grub terra treats because they do add more calcium than like what m most people use as mealworms. These are soldier fly larvae, so they're actually better for the chickens. Oh my gosh, that sun feels so good. It's horrible for the camera though. Do they make the grass messy with poop when roaming the yard or tear the grass up 1,000 times yes if you're gonna have free-ranging chickens uh, do not expect to have a pristine yard there's gonna be a lot of poop there's going to be spots where they like to hang out where they're gonna destroy to show you guys how little I knew when I got them I got chickens because I thought that they would eat the weeds the creeping Charlie and leave the grass alone for some reason I don't know where I got that idea but our yard has never been the same since so that's part of the reason why we're moving them to a bigger farm property that we're going to be working on you're you're smarter than me if you're onto that already what food scraps can chickens eat so there are lists on pinterest i will say a lot of them i think why is it so hard to control the light here i would read other chicken blogs for this one there's kind of lists on pinterest if you search that in pinterest um, i'll link a few for you below i will say a lot of them i think are more strict than they need to be so i know some people say you're never supposed to feed your chickens tomatoes we've fed ours tomatoes the general rule of thumb is don't feed your chickens anything that you wouldn't eat yourself we don't like to give ours a lot of processed foods um, chocolate we don't give ours chocolate I've heard they're not supposed to have avocado but that's something that I would look at a written list and um, because I'm not 
I don't know enough to just rattle that off off the top of my head. I will say chickens are pretty darn good at knowing what they can eat and they can't eat. We've seen a few caterpillars, like I tried to feed him a caterpillar one time, it was one of those black and brown ones, and I tossed it to him and they looked at it and they all did their like little alarm call as they stared at it. So somehow they knew that that was not good for them to eat. As a general rule of thumb though, we just try and stay away from uh, processed foods for our girls. We try and stay, stay away from anything that's spoiled obviously. Uh, but there's a few others like chocolate and avocado and that kind of thing that can come up on online lists really easy. How much chick grit do I mix into chick food? I just sort of sprinkle a little bit across the top. I have a chick video where I showed you how much I put in mine, um, but it doesn't have to be a lot. How time consuming is it to have chickens? In, in my personal opinion, um, not time consuming at all. I would say I give them maybe five, 10 minutes a day every day at most and then maybe once a week it takes like 10-15 minutes to kind of just take care of their coop and then on top of that like maybe two hours twice a year to give their coop a really deep clean hey girls see that's buffy again buffy's making all the noise best food to give your chick chickens i guess um layer feed if you've got laying hens but again i like to feed mine a really diverse diet to keep their nutrients uh, all in check. Every time I do this, every time I call them, they start coming over and pecking my jacket, all the zippers, like like they know they're supposed to have treats, but I don't have any for them. Best way to transition chickens from the coop to the brooder, brooder to the coop. Um, we went over this a little bit, so gradually over time. What's your number one tip for someone who wants to get their first chicks? Again, it's probably just researching predators and learning how to protect against predators as well as uh, joining those chicken groups because you're gonna have a lot of questions and those people are gonna be the best for answering it. My chicken eggs won't peel very good when, oh, won't peel very good when I boil them. Any advice? Yes, yeah, so I actually did a video where we tested out, I think it was like six different methods of how to do hard boiled eggs and we found the best method. <laughs> to be honest, we don't eat a lot of hard boiled eggs and I can't even remember what the answer was. I think it was that the older chicken eggs at room temperature were easiest to peel but it was having them room temperature before they were boiled was really key. So I'll link that video for you guys below, but it was pretty interesting. We tested out a ton of different methods and um, the older eggs that were room temperature, I wanna say were the easiest to peel every single time. Do you tag your chickens or just recognize their patterns or know their names? We don't tag our chickens. Um, they all have different mostly different patterns so we just recognize them by sight which is one of the reasons why i love easter eggers by the way because you can buy them in bulk and they're not all gonna look the same so i think it's super fun to get to know their personalities best time to transition your chicks to the coop all depends on the weather so it's going to depend on your specific area see told you guys it's snowing do you have to change your care routine when pregnant have somebody else clean the coop that's a good question. Um, my doctor didn't tell me, whoa, it's really snowing. My doctor didn't tell me I had to be worried about anything with the chickens, uh, like as far as toxoplasmosis goes. I know you have to be careful with cats. I'm not sure if chickens pass that along or not, so um, I would talk to your doctor and just talk to your doctor probably. I don't have any good advice in this area. What type of table scraps do you feed your chickens? How often? We feed our chickens table scraps pretty much every single day. They are our garbage disposals. <laughs> They're all eating the snow. <laughs> the guys, that's not food. Some people say to be careful about how many table scraps you give your chickens because um, it can, if they, the layer feed is kind of designed to get them to lay as much as possible, as fast as possible. So it may slow down their laying if they eat more of a natural diet, which is something that we are totally okay with. How do you know, okay, so we did that one. How do you introduce new chickens? How do you feed your crossbeak? I have one, she can't eat much and is undernourished. So crossbeak can have have varying kind of severities. I think ours is kind of a moderate severity case. I know there are cases that will be so bad that they can't survive, um, but I like to leave it up to the chicken. So we've only had one crossbeak chicken and she basically we feed her by making sure there's a pile of food so she eats by kind of smashing her face in and scooping it up so if there's like little if they're scattered on the ground she won't be able to eat it she doesn't even try because she knows she can't so we always make sure there's a big pile of food for her and that's how she eats and if she doesn't have a big pile of food and it's down to kind of like a lower level she lets us know she'll chase us around and tell us we need to fill up her food again we live in so what age do you transition your chicks outside and how do you do it i went over this but this person says they live in Wisconsin too. Um, and I'll say we usually don't transition them outside full time until uh, usually at least June, but 
yeah, you want to be careful with the weather. So do you have Rhode Island Reds? Such a friendly breed. I actually don't have Rhode Island Reds. I would love some. I've heard they're so friendly. We have a couple that really look like Rhode Island Reds, but they are just Easter Egger mutts, which I love. I am super happy with those Easter Eggers. How to deal with crossbeak, kind of went over this. OMG, my seven-year-old will love this. We have chickens and she knows about them more than I do. Seriously, kids can know so much when they just, oh my gosh, some kids know so much about chickens. It's crazy. There's like kids on the chicken group that know more than I do. When can I start giving uh, my new small chicks treats like corn or other food one week old? I would say one week is probably earlier than I would do it. Um, ask other people, don't just take my advice, but I would probably wait till at least four weeks. But that's just because we have had multiple chicks with sauerkraut, which is such a pain. And so I'm a little bit uh, more conservative on the treat side of things. That's one that I would say probably ask local chicken groups. Um, I, I'm not an expert on all this stuff. So I would ask around for that one. Do you have to kill your chickens after they stop laying eggs? No, you really don't. <laughs> and I hate that people do that. So the deal is chickens will slow down how much they lay as they get older. So you can have chickens that are five, six, seven years old and still occasionally lay an egg. It's not unheard of. And if you don't use supplemental light in the winter to force them to lay, it's actually not very uncommon for them to lay longer throughout their whole life. So for us, rather than killing chickens and getting new ones, I would rather just get more chickens and keep them all together. So that's why another thing I recommend is not getting all the chickens you want the first year. I recommend getting a little bit the first year. Then if you're gonna get more, getting a little bit more. We basically get two or three chicks every year, which just kind of keeps the egg production up. We still have way, way more eggs than we need. But no, you definitely don't have to kill your girls when they stop laying. In my opinion, they work very hard and they are more than deserving of being allowed to live out their lives happily. What are the friendliest chickens and good with small children? So this is gonna depend on how you raise them. I would say uh, Rhode Island Reds are supposed to be really friendly, Orpingtons are supposed to be really friendly. As a general rule of thumb, the bigger and fluffier the bird is, generally they tend to be friendlier. So like the smaller, kind of skinnier leghorns and like the game breeds, those are usually gonna be more flighty. Some of the more collectible birds are gonna be on the more flighty side. Um, usually it's like the bigger common birds that a lot of times are like dual purpose too. They tend to be a little more calm. My all time favorite are my Easter Eggers. I know they're not a purebred breed and I really don't care. They're so fun because they lay different color eggs. They grow up to be different colors and they are by far the friendliest chickens that I have. Are they aggressive and chase after you? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, roosters can be, I've heard, but we don't have a rooster. The hens are sweet as can be. How do I know if they're bored or have enough entertainment? Good question. So they will start pecking at each other when they are bored. A lot of times you'll see like on farms, especially factory farms, if they're like in a non-cage setting, they'll all have like bare butts and bare backs because they're picking the feathers off each other. That means that they're stressed or they're bored or both. So if you see them picking on each other, if you see them picking on their environment, like pecking at their coop, that's not a great thing. But I think generally the pecking is gonna be a pretty good indicator that they are bored. If you don't have a lot of space, you can't free range and you want to help them be less bored, there's all sorts of treat things you can put together that they can peck at that instead of pecking at each other and at the ground. When do you start feeding table scraps? Yeah, I honestly, we don't personally start feeding table scraps until they're outside because once they're outside, I know that they can get their own grit and they can kind of use the natural biome to regulate their systems. Until then, when they're kept inside, it's really kind of an artificial environment and I don't know that they're gonna have everything they need to break down the table scraps and the different food. So. Um, use your best judgment on that, but we wait until they're outside usually. If you were to start over again with chickens, what would you do different? <sighs> Researching predators from the beginning. It's so heartbreaking when you lose them. Um, I would probably get fewer chickens that first year so that I could get more chickens later on. I probably would also give up any expectations for a beautiful yard <laughs> just straight from the get-go because I really frustrated myself trying to keep up with that at the beginning and there's just no way to do it. When do chickens molt? So chickens usually molt kind of spring, summer, and then again, right before kind of 
fall winter the unfortunate thing that i've noticed is they don't all molt at the same time so the molting process for us between 17 chickens usually goes on for uh two to three months actually so some will start molting and then others will start and then others will start and then usually by the end especially when winter's here uh, we'll get some late molters that really don't have the feathers that they need to stay warm so we have even brought some chickens inside on really cold nights on occasion if they are really late molters so something to keep an eye out for at this at seven weeks are the chickens okay outside in 35 degrees without a heat lamp? That might be pushing it. That might be pushing it a little bit. Uh, 35 degrees is really cold. So I would go by those charts that uh, show the five degree kind of weekly decrease in temperature that's okay um, i don't have the chart in front of me but i would guess that that's pushing it a little bit especially without a heat lamp so if you have one of those cold spells and you really need them outside the rest of the time you can always bring them inside if you're just watching the weather do you need to vaccinate chickens uh we get our chickens who are vaccinated against certain diseases as chicks i have not taken my chickens to the vet to be vaccinated <laughs> I hope you're not supposed to because that's not something that I've been doing. Which is the friendliest breed? We kind of went over this. Do they smell? Are they hard to take care of? They shouldn't smell. If they smell, that means that something is wrong. Are they hard to take care of? In my opinion, no. I've had hamsters, guinea pigs, parakeets, dogs, cats. In my opinion, chickens are the easiest pet because they live outside and they can have kind of a self-composting system. So um, in my opinion, they're not hard to take care of. We just bought a house and inherited hens, chickens for dummies. Congratulations, that is so fun. Um, just check out that video, Taking Care of Chickens 101. Um, that's probably the best video. I'll link it for you guys below. Can chickens and ducks be penned together? This is not something that I've ever done, um, but I know it can be done because I follow some people on Instagram who do it. I will say I think ducks make a bigger mess than chickens when it comes to water, so you just have to make sure that um, you're cleaning out the water and that kind of thing. Not something I'm an expert on, but I have seen it done before. When do you change the chick's food from starter, medicated or unmedicated, and adult feed? So I always have the chicks on starter grower feed until they lay their first egg. Once they start laying, that means they're gonna need the calcium in the layer feed, so I switch them over then. So the question is, what do you do if you have pullets who aren't laying with hens who are? In that case, we feed everybody the starter grower feed. The main difference is that the starter grower feed doesn't have the calcium fortification that the layered feed has. So when we do that, we will just provide a lot of eggshells to the girls so that the ones who are laying can get plenty of calcium. We've never had a problem with soft eggshells or breaking eggs or anything like that. So that's what we do. You don't, I've heard that you don't want to feed chickens the layer feed if they're not laying because the calcium can supposedly build up in their system uh, and cause a problem and not be healthy for them. So when in doubt, we feed all of our chickens the starter grower feed until everybody's laying. Then once they're laying eggs, they have a way to get rid of that extra calcium and we switch over to the layer feed. Why is one of my chickens not growing as fast as others? Um, I hope she's okay. Make sure she's able to get enough food. Sometimes the chickens will bully a certain chicken, so make sure she has plenty of access to food. She could also just be a different breed. Bantams will grow slower and hope she's okay. What do you use as bedding in your coop? My all-time favorite bedding is a fine flake. So it's not the thick pine shavings that people like to go for usually. Fine flake, pine bedding. I would stay away from cedar bedding, anything that's aromatic. Um, and then also my husband does a lot of woodworking. So we will throw, like when he's planing down wood and we get wood shavings, we'll put those in there. Basically, I like the finer type of bedding. I find it breaks down a lot quicker than the thick stuff. You don't necessarily want pure dust, obviously. That's not gonna be good for their lungs, but the really fine flake, I get mine from Tractor Supply. It's like five bucks a bag. That is my go-to. Do chickens like to be pet? <laughs> I hope so, because I pet mine a lot. If your chickens trust you, they will squat for you, which is, <laughs> kind of it's what they would do to show submission to like a rooster so we'll walk up to our chickens and they will actually ask to be pet I don't know if they're doing it because they like to be pet or just because that's their instinct but it, it's pretty cute either way actually some chickens definitely like to be held and cuddled so I think it all depends on the chicken what's good to put in the ground in the run area um, I, I like to use wood chips like thick wood chips I have heard some people say that's not safe I'm not sure why they say that We've never had a problem with it, but we use kind of the same deep litter system with wood chips. They just hold up to rain and to the elements a little bit better than like the shavings. I don't like shavings outside because they just get soaked by the rain. So maybe if it's covered, that's okay. And the other thing I hate, hate is straw. I had chicken experts tell me to put straw in the run. Never, never again. It smelled so bad, so fast. 
maybe if you have a covered run that's what you should do but um, my favorite has been just thick wood chips so far again I have some people have said that they you're not supposed to do that I'm not sure why if you've heard why that is go ahead and put it in the comments um, almost four years of doing it now and we have never had a problem how do you tame them or make them not so flighty best thing you can do is spend time with them as chicks all day every day <laughs> just kidding that's that's really excessive spend as much time with them handling them as you can one thing I know is chicks really don't like to be grabbed and birds in general don't like to be grabbed so if you can get them to walk up and kind of hold them on your hand I think they enjoy that more than trying to grab them and cuddle them what is your favorite breed the originals the Easter Eggers they're so sweet they're so much fun what do you do with all your eggs that is a good question um, so normally my husband and I would eat a lot of eggs we would eat six to eight eggs a day ever since I got pregnant I could not stand the taste of eggs or the smell of eggs even so we have a lot of egg buildup. We like to give them away to friends, family, neighbors. Uh, we'll feed some to the dogs. I'll be honest, a lot of them go back to the chickens because <laughs> they really love them. Normally we eat them, but they're they, we've been giving more away than anything these days. All right, legalities. Legalities are all gonna depend on your local municipality, your area. Make sure you're checking that you're doing everything legally. Something in the United States is interesting. Uh, chickens are not classified as pets. They're classified as agricultural property, basically, I believe. I'm not a lawyer, but um, if you haven't already, look into what happened in California with the virulent Newcastle disease. Basically, a lot of people had their chickens forcibly put down because there was a disease that they were trying to get rid of. And even if the chickens were negative, they, they just went around killing thousands and thousands of people's pets. Um, so I would know before you know going into it that chickens aren't necessarily protected the way that dogs and cats are. They're not considered pets by the government, uh, in America at least. So you might have less power than you might expect. Kind of a, a dark thing that happened there, but something to look into. I would love to have chickens. How hard is it to raise chickens for eggs? I know nothing. It's so easy. You can totally do it. Again, make sure it's legal where you live <laughs> and make sure your neighbors are cool with it. But again, I swear they're the easiest pet that I've ever owned. Much easier than dogs or cats or anything like that. How can I teach my chickens to go up in the coop at night? Two out of my six do the other four wait for me? Ooh, that's a good question. One of my questions would be, is the sun actually down is it dark before they're going in I used to mainly when I first had chicks I would manually put them in the coop and then I realized that I was kind of jumping the gun that if I just waited 30 more minutes they would go up by themselves but one thing some people recommend is to keep them locked in the coop for a few days day and night before you actually let them outside and that kind of teaches them that that's their home base um, so maybe that's something that you could try as well how much should I feed them I actually don't know the answer to this. We sort of let our chickens self-regulate. They have free access to food all day and then we give them plenty of scraps too. Um, if you feed them too much, they will get fat and they will lay less, so something to keep in mind, but we get plenty of eggs for us. My coop and yards filled with feathers. Is this normal for eight-week-old pullets? They look fine. As long as you're making sure that you have all your girls um, and they're looking fine, I wouldn't be too worried, but um, they could be going through an early molt, but that seems pretty young to molt, so I don't know, maybe their systems are just regulating a little bit. If you know, drop in the comments if you know the answer to that one. This is the longest video ever. <laughs> it's blizzarding outside now. Oh my gosh, it is almost May. This is why I don't get chicks early in Wisconsin. Like, this is why. How loud are hens do neighbors in an urban setting mind? So that is all gonna depend on your neighbors. We have super cool neighbors. It is really snowing. <laughs> Um, I would say if you have tension with your neighbors and you're not allowed to have chickens, definitely uh, not something that I would recommend going for. All right guys, we are almost done. And yep, welcome to Wisconsin. How many nesting boxes should I have for six hens? Um, to be honest, most of your hens are probably gonna use one nest box. I would recommend always having at least two nest boxes because if one chicken is bullied and the other ones won't let her in then she can at least use another one but you'll find that chickens like to fight over the best nest box whichever one that is that they decide so um i would say two is probably a good number that's what i would have if i had six chickens and that's also i have now 17 chickens and they have two nest boxes as well and it works perfectly for us from minnesota chicken coop warmth installation or just heat plate would be fine um you can use a heat plate if you want i have a whole video on caring for chickens in the winter which i'll link for you below there's a lot of info i go into there um when are you getting more chicks 
<laughs> so we're gonna get more chicks probably in June. I'm planning like beginning to mid June. And the reason we're waiting to get chicks until summer is because of what you're seeing here, because uh, our climate is just so unpredictable. And I really hate having chicks inside. Once they get older, they get smelly and they get just loud and they they don't like to be inside at that point either. So I like to wait until the weather's warmer personally. How much space should backyard chickens have? What table scraps are aren't safe? So we went over the table scraps a little bit. As far as how much space they should have, they do have kind of general recommendations. I'll link below. I would always say, give them more space than kind of the general guideline. The more space that they have, the less they're gonna pick on each other. Generally, the healthier they're gonna be too. So um, I would take those general guidelines and I would try and make it bigger if possible. Do you have a rooster? We do not have a rooster right now. We are hoping to get a rooster um, soon. What floor do you need when deep, doing deep litter? So we have a um, plywood floor. I'm not sure if it's treated plywood or not. I'll have to check on that for you. But I do know that that plywood will eventually start to break down with the deep litter method so um, something that if you're gonna have a plywood floor I would plan on at least switching out the floor every I don't know five I don't know I don't want to give you guys a number because I don't want it to be wrong but our last plywood floor we had for three years did deep litter the whole time it was fine I'm hoping that this one will last five ish but if you're worried about the plywood breaking down one thing that you can do is put kind of like a vinyl topper on it or something and that will separate it a little bit too apple cider vinegar I talked about I'm not a fan personally I've had bad experiences with apple cider vinegar and uh, the actual science behind it being beneficial for either humans or animals is a, a little bit shady. So if you like it, you're welcome to use it. We do not use it with our animals. How do your chickens know? Let's go in before the door closes. We got this question a lot about our automatic door, which is currently on the fritz. Our chickens broke it when they were trying to <laughs> battering ram their way out because it was opening a little late. It was our fault. Chickens naturally will go in as the sun is setting. So we just have our door set to go down after the sun is down and then to come up at just before the sun comes up the reason that they busted it is because it was coming up too late and they were trying to get out and they're pushing on it as it was opening um it's a pretty easy fix but yes they do know automatically it's in their nature to roost when the sun goes down as long as they know that that's their home base they will head in there all by themselves all right guys i think that's where i'm gonna leave it today i'm sorry if i didn't get to your question feel free to shoot me a message on instagram if i didn't answer your question our instagram handle is oak underscore above Another thing is I really don't know everything about chickens. Everything that I just went through is all kind of just based on my experience, but I could be wrong on some of these answers. So I want you guys to go to your local chicken groups to go again. Backyardchickens.com is a forum website that has a ton of info on all this stuff. So like I always say, I want you guys to use my advice and my experience as one little data point on a huge graph. So get a, as wide of a range of opinions as possible and make the best decision for you and your flock based on everybody. If you guys haven't already subscribed to our channel, uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can join us again in the future, especially because like I said, we should be bringing home some new chicks in a few weeks here. You can also leave questions and comments below. Please feel free to weigh in with your advice and comments below. People are always really good about that and the community is awesome. So feel free to ask questions in the comments below and somebody else can answer them for you too. Thank you for watching guys. We will see you next time.